We are busy looking at systems of linear equations. The first part, we just introduced what systems of linear equations are, and I will link the whole playlist in the description by, down below if you've missed it. So now let's take a look at the system of linear equations. So if I've got a system with m equations in n unknowns as described there, we can write it as a matrix equation. So if I write that one as a matrix equation, I get one, A11, A12, all the way to A1n, A21, A22, all the way to A2n, and so on the mth one, AM1, AM2, all the way to AMN. These are the coefficients of my unknowns, x1 to xn. If I multiply that with x1, x2, all the way to xn, I will get b1, b2, all the way to bm. So this is my matrix equation describing the system of m equations in n unknowns. Now, I can define what we call our coefficient matrix of the system. That's the matrix here on the left-hand side. That's my coefficient matrix. That consists of the coefficients of all my unknowns in my system of equations. Just take note, the order is very important. You have to have your unknowns in the same order and complete that system. If there's a missing one, for example, if there are no x2s in the first equation, we put a zero there. So that's my coefficient matrix. And then we define what we call an augmented matrix. I take my coefficient matrix and I put another column in there, which is this column B1 to Bm. I add another column to my coefficient matrix, that's called the augmented matrix. And I'm going to use these matrices to solve these systems. All right, so let's take a look at a specific example, solving a system of linear equations. Now we're going to start with something very small, two equations in two unknowns. Now yet again, there's lots of ways to solve this. The reason we're going to use the matrices and what we call Gauss-Jordan elimination to solve this is to develop the technique so that when we expand it to bigger systems, we already know the technique. So I know you can get to the answer much quicker using some other techniques, but that's not the point. We want to practice the method because the method can be applied to any size system. So there's three operations. When we call them operations, there's, we call them row operations on matrices. But if we just look at a system of equations, the first operation I'm looking at is multiplying an equation through by a non-zero constant. So what I'm saying is if I take this first equation and I just double it up, 4x plus 8y equal to minus 4. If I replace this equation with that one, the other one stays the same. Now, I don't really have a reason to do that, but what I'm saying is this doesn't change the solution set. The fact that I multiplied an equation straight through by a constant doesn't change the solution. So that's one thing we need to make sure of. It doesn't change the solution multiplying it through with a non-zero constant, of course. The second thing that doesn't change the solution set is interchanging the two equations. What does it matter if I wrote them in that order? It's not going to change the solution if I change the order in which I write the equations. So that we need to be happy with. It doesn't change the, or it doesn't change the solution if I swap the order around. The third one is a little bit more tricky to come to grips with, but you can wrestle with that one a little bit. If I add a multiple of one of the equations to another equation, so I take the first equation, I double it up, and I add it to the second equation. My solution set doesn't change. And I recommend here, take two simple linear equations and look at what happens if you add a multiple of one to the other. We're going to do it with all of these equations, but you need to convince yourself that it doesn't change the solution set. So that's important to know. So these are three operations that we can do on equations that does not change the solution set. And we're going to carry them over into matrices. So what I'm going to do to do Gaussian elimination or Gauss-Jordan elimination, I'm going to take this system, which is 2x plus 4y equal to minus 2, 3x minus y equal to 4. I'm going to write Look at the augmented 
coefficient matrix, meaning 2, 4, 3, minus 1. That's the coefficient matrix. But I'm going to add another column, minus 2, 4. And this gives me a picture of what my system looks like. 2x plus 4y is equal to minus 2. 3x minus y is equal to 4. You can put a dotted line there if you want, where I augment it, but that doesn't matter. That's just so that we've got all the information here. So what we did, and we're now doing what we call row operations. I'm going to take that first row and divide it by 2. Row 1, and with matrices, we rather say we multiply, so I'm multiplying it with a half. And this is the notation I use. Take row 1 and multiply it by a half. And then I've got 1, 2, minus 1, 3, minus 1, 4. My second row didn't change, which means my first equation, I multiplied through by a half. It didn't change the solution set. But just take a note, I'm putting a big arrow here. The, the first matrix and the second matrix are not equal. The systems might have the same solution, but those matrices aren't equal. So that's my first step. Take the first row and multiply it by a half. Now I'm going to get to what we do, why we're doing it in our process shortly. I'm first going to go through the process and then I'll show to you exactly technically what we're doing. My next step, which we also said is legal, is I'm going to add a multiple of one row to another one. So I'm going to take row two and add minus three times row one to it. Now the question is why do we want to do it? But let me show you. I'm going to do it first, and then I'm going to write it as equations again. So if I take row 1, it stays the same. 1, 2, minus 1. I take row 2, and I add minus 3 times row 1 to it. So I'm taking this value, multiplied by minus 3, and adding it to this value. Then I get 0. It's significant. You'll see shortly. I'm going to take this value, multiplied by minus 3. So I've got minus 6 added to that one. And that gives me minus 7. I'm going to take this one, multiplied by minus 3, and add it to 4. Multiplied by minus 3 gives me 3, plus 4 gives me 7. Now, if I take what I just did now, and I just rewrite it as a system of equations again, x plus 2y is equal to minus 1, 0x minus 7y is equal to 7. If you write it like that, now all of a sudden you see it's very easy to get the value of y. And that's why we go through this process. Now, firstly, we prefer the matrices because then I don't have to write the pluses and the x's and the y's and the equals all the time. We can just look at the numbers because that's what plays a role here. So rewriting that as a system, I can see it's convenient having a zero there. Because then I've eliminated, and that's what's called Gaussian elimination, I've eliminated one of the variables out of one of the equations. Okay, now... What I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it with the matrix again and then write it as a system, I'm going to leave row 1 the same, 1, 2, minus 1. I'm going to take row 2 and multiply it by minus 1 over 7. This one would be a bit more obvious why I want to do it. I'm going to multiply the second equation all the way through by minus 1 over 7, because then I've got 1, 0, 1, minus 1. So if I had to rewrite that as a system of equations, x plus 2y is minus 1, y is equal to minus 1. I've solved for y. All right. My last step, I'm going to go back up. I want to now solve for x. So I'm going to substitute this value of y into here. How do I do it? I say, well, take row 1 and add. I want to eliminate that 2y. I want a 0 there because I just want an x. So I'm going to add minus 2 times row 2. If you're not happy where the numbers come from, the more examples we do, it'll become clear. So now row 2 stays the same, 0, 1, minus 1. But row 1, I've got 1 plus minus 2 times this. That stays 1. 2 plus minus 2 times 1 is 0. Minus 1 plus minus 2 times minus 1. So it's minus 1 plus 2, that gives me 1. So if, if I had to write that as a system, I've got x is equal to 1, y is equal to minus 1. We've solved the system. So if it's in the form where I've got 1, 0, 0, 1 here, whatever's here on the right-hand side, the augmented part, is the values of x and y. All right. So let's go over exactly what we did now a little bit faster. The first thing we did is we got a 1 here in the first row, first column. That is what we're going to call a leading 1. Now we want it there because it helps us work everything else after that quite easily. A leading one, then I use that row 
to, to get a zero underneath the leading one. Then I used this row I had to make the second one a leading one. And then I used that leading one to get a zero above it. And that's how we solved the system. All right. We're going to do it lots of times and you've got to practice it. You've got to pay attention. You've got to try it a couple of times before it clicks in. But in our next video, we're going to do lots more.